Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and this is something I kind of forgot exists. The tier list maker. So this is something that I thought about a long time ago about doing, you know, I have a big history of electronics and technology and that's just kind of my thing. I forgot that the tier list maker exists and I really want to use it for some new video ideas of just ranking different different tech, different electronics, different things here and there, you know, turn this into a series of just random tier lists and I'll just talk about my thoughts and rank some things and you guys can, bless you, let me know down in the comments. I don't know if you heard that, my guinea pig is sneezing or making happy noises, I don't know, I've been meaning to move these things out of my office and I keep forgetting. So, anyway. I need to add a tier to this. We need to add a tier. Can I? Will never own. Oops. Oh, apparently, since I've never used this, I don't know how it works. I'm going to delete this row. Will never own. So that's going to be things for things I am not willing to use at all. Um, and even on top of that, as somebody who buys and repairs and flips devices, uh, as like a side gig, I won't even give those phones to people. And then there's going to also be some phones in this, uh, that are not here, phone brands that are not here that I'll try to talk about and, uh, give some insight in on some phones that you guys have probably never heard of. So right off the back, we're going to go in order here. My. These phones are actually fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, me phones, my phones, I forget how to say it exactly, but fantastic phones, and right up there the same way is actually Redmi with those. I like Redmi as well. Me phones, Redmi phones, they're basically just different Xiaomi phones in the end. Um, every Xiaomi phone I've ever had in my hand, I have very much enjoyed, and I really wish they were more prominent in the U.S. because I feel like if people gave them a chance, they would actually overtake something. I'm not going to say Samsung, but they would be like right behind Samsung. I have a, or actually I sold it recently. I sold it just before Christmas. I had a Redmi Note 9 Pro from overseas that was running Ubuntu Touch. It was not Android at all. No Android system inside of it at all. Simply Ubuntu Touch. And it was freaking awesome. The battery life was like three or four days with moderate use. It didn't work with AT&T. It didn't work with Verizon. It worked with Mint Mobile. And that was good enough for me. AT&T has a white listing for devices and in my area, at least, a lot of Verizon is still CDMA. So no matter what, it was not going to work for me. And that's why I ended up selling it, because it was a phone taking up space. It was worth a lot of money. Time to get rid of it. Uh, Red phones. Red made a single phone. As far as I'm aware, they only made one phone. Hold on. I'm going to Google it, make sure I'm not an idiot. One sec. I was right. Red. This might not be the red that they meant to put on this list. Red, uh, red magic cameras. Um, they made one phone. They made the red hydrogen one. I'm wondering if that's not what they meant to put here. Because there is another red uh, something or other that I've heard of in the cell phone world. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. But... C tier. I played with one once. For them being a major camera company, I was expecting the camera on the back of the phone to be fantastic, and it was no better than like a high end ZTE. Like the phone was not great. So now we move on to one of my favorite phones ever. I want them to make a Razer Phone 3. Make a damn Razer Phone 3. Okay, it's going to be high A tier not going S tier simply because there are so many problems with the Razer phone 2 and there's no part availability for repairing them. 
So, yes, Razer Phone 2 is one of my favorite phones, and at least once a week I think about moving back to mine that's running Lineage. A big thing for me in an Android phone is can I custom ROM it? Can I root it? And this is going to sound really stupid. Can I Pokemon Go hack? If those three things are met and the Pokemon Go doesn't lag, I will enjoy the phone. And when we get down to Google, I will understand you will understand my frustration. So, hi A tier. It's a difficult phone to fix. There is an issue specifically with the charging ports where after a while it seems to just stop working and it boot loops when you plug in a charger. Uh, and also the batteries, you can get replacement batteries for them. Um, but other than that, good luck repairing one. It's not really worth it anymore unless you really enjoy the phone. But uh, yeah. Let's let's go with another one of my favorites that I own. I want to say almost a dozen of them. Two of which are factory sealed in the box, and I have the DAC and 3D camera attachment. Essential. Uh, where do I put you, Essential? Where do I put you? Are you a B tier? Are you an A tier? Are you an S tier? The Essential phone is a great bang for the buck. I'm going S tier. Essential phones were fantastic. The only flaw to an Essential phone is when you go to repair it and put the screen back down. There's very little bezel between the LCD and the side metal and the framing of the phone. So when you go to repair an Essential phone, you are playing with fire with reattaching it to the frame. There are YouTube videos out there. They make it look easy. It is not easy. I promise you it is not easy, unfortunately. But fantastic phone. You can get one for about the same price as like a Galaxy S9 is when I first start, started collecting them. They've only gone down in price ever since then. The two that I have in box, one of them I bought actually from my one of my favorite YouTube creators when he auctioned off a bunch of stuff on eBay because he was moving across the country and he didn't want to take it with him. I got the DAC and the phone from him. And that's going to stay in the box. That's one of my favorite possessions. Uh, the drummer Kobus, I hope he gets his YouTube channel back. It was recently hacked by the OBS hackers, the ones that are making the fake OBS and then putting it on Google and they get higher rankings than OBS's actual website. I hope he gets his channel back. I've been watching his channel for years and years and years. Let's just hope that he gets his stuff back. But Essential Phones, still hands down to this day, my favorite phone I have ever owned and used is the Essential Phone 1. And I really wish they would have had the chance to make more. I am moving these guinea pigs. They are annoying. Hold on. My office is so quiet now. Like, i got to really clean up after them. But anyway, let's get back to <laughs> let's get back to this. Fuck ZTEs. No more. They don't deserve to exist. I'm going to save Apple for last. I'm going to save things that I've currently owned for last. Um They made phones? Hold on. That's kind of what I thought. That's kind of what I thought. They're just going to go there. Energizer. B tier. What is the Energizer cell phone? They made one, as far as I know. I have held it in my hands. I have used it. Holy crap, what a freaking brick. Oh my god. Um, the Energizer phone that I got to play with, I think, had a 6,000 milliamp hour battery in it. It was a chonky, chonky boy. Very cool phone. Would definitely potentially use one as a daily driver because the battery lasted four days. And then I don't think anybody ever made custom ROMs for it. I never got to look into it. I sold it too quickly. But very cool phone. Very, very cool phone. 
Samsung. C tier. Good hardware. Good hardware. That's about all I have good to say about Samsung. North American phones, North American consumers are specifically attacked and the bootloaders are locked. And there's only exploits for specific bootloaders. Um, the international variants, people will argue with me on this to the day I die. The Xenios versions of Samsung phones are better than the Snapdragon phones. I had two identical Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5Gs. I actually made videos on my Xenios version a while back, I believe, um, on how to put a custom ROM on it. My Snapdragon version had an unlocked bootloader. My Xenios version had an unlocked bootloader. Just got lucky that I had one of each. Put Lineage OS on both. And I should have done like a comparison video. Would have been really cool and potentially, you know, a lot of fun to make a video about. But I lined them up side by side, used them at the same time. The Xenios version was snappier. Way snappier, way more responsive, booted way faster. And overall was just more stable. Um, it also kept its voice over LTE with the Lineage OS, whereas the Snapdragon variant for some reason loses it. So, Samsung is C-tier because bloatware, software is horrible, their Android OS is gigantic. It's so stupidly bloated. There is no reason for it. Uh, but the hardware is good. So I won't put it in will never own, because... I've owned Galaxy in the past. One of my favorite phones I ever owned was the Galaxy S5. I believe that's the best Samsung Galaxy that's ever existed, with a close second being the Note Edge. I love that only one side was curved. Awesome freaking phone. Other than that, unless I can daily drive a, a uh, an international variant with a Xenios and unlock the bootloader and put Lineage on it, I won't use it. Asus. B tier. Good phones. I've had the, uh, I have an Asus Zenfone something or other in my desk drawer right now with a damaged LCD, but it's not damaged in a way that it's not usable. It's just there's a little line in like one row of pixels at the very bottom of the screen. So it's very usable. Um, but good phones overall. I've played with a couple of them. I've only ever owned this one. I like the phone a lot. Would daily drive it if I absolutely had to, but it doesn't seem to work with Verizon, and I think mine is locked. I think that's why it won't work with Verizon, because it didn't work with Mint Mobile either. So mine might be locked, but there's no way to figure out what carrier it is locked to. So it's kind of just a, if my son wants a new phone to play with, or like once my two-year-old becomes like a four-year-old and he can have a phone to at least watch YouTube videos on himself, he'll probably get the Asus phone. It's not that bad. The line isn't that bad. It's whatever. BlackBerry, E tier. I love the BlackBerry Storm. A lot of people bitched about it. And a lot of the BlackBerry Android phones were actually very cool as well. One of the last phones to have full keyboards, physical keyboards. I miss physical keyboards. I actually still have... It's in one of my drawers, and I wish I had a face cam set up, but... My office isn't quite there yet, so one of these days I'll do it. You'll you'll recognize this ASMR if I got it right. That is a Droid Global 2 running Android Gingerbread. Still works, still charges. 5 megapixel camera on the back. Still has Tap Tap Revenge installed from when I originally got the phone brand new. I will never get rid of this phone. Uh, is Motorola on here? It is. So oh, I meant to move it. Motorola. We're going to go B tier with Motorola as well. They're not the greatest phones. They don't have a good resale value. Um, they just kind of exist. And now that Verizon owns the mobile division of Motorola, and specifically they call it just Moto, they just aren't that great. And the resale value of a Motorola is terrible. I had a 2022 
what is that, the Moto G Power, I think is that lineup. I did 2022 G Power, brand new, never used, A class, uh, grade A condition. It only sold for 100 bucks. The Samsung Galaxy, that's kind of the equivalent at hardware level, is I think like the S10. And even that sells for more than that now. So Motorola's not great, especially even brand new ones. Like they're not even worth it. If you're somebody that does like Amazon return boxes or something like that and you get a lot of Motorola's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's talk LG. That's going to be an argument, I feel like, because LG phones... Yeah, not great in the long run, or like when they first started, especially like the Stylo 2, they got, there was a class action lawsuit over that phone. But realistically, except for the phone brands on this list that have only made a handful of phones, like Essential, Razer, Red, Energizer, and that's really it. All the other brands on here have had some form of warranty or something like that where they had to say like hey we got to warranty these things for pretty much all of time and even some of the brands down here have had to do that too um the stylo 2 was a nightmare but even apple wasn't immune to the same thing the stylo 2 went through but we'll get to that uh long story actually i'll say it now because i'll probably forget by then they did a, a method of soldering called cold soldering on the iPhone 7s, the A1660s. The iPhone 7, what cold soldering is, is basically a different soldering method with solder that melts at a lower temperature. And when you put all that inside of an enclosed casing that gets hot, it doesn't mix well. And what ended up happening is the baseband board would start to separate from the phone board would no longer make contact with the board and you would lose your IMEI and cell phone signal. LG had the same issue. Actually, so did Samsung with the Galaxy S5s, so the RAM chips on the on the board, the RAM. Um, well, they're SOC, basically. The LGs had the same thing with the Stylo 2 and the Stylo 3, um, but it was only early production Stylo 3s, so like the first one or two batches, and then they learned their lesson. So, real me. I don't like them. They are okay phones. I just don't like them myself. I wouldn't use one myself, but like if I got one in some form of a really good deal, I would still resell it. I'll never sell these. Let's go with Izu. Not good. The end. Nokia. Won't use. Not good. Um, but will resale if I get them, especially because I can actually root and ROM some of them with GSI images, and they run so much better. Sharp. Sharp makes some cool-ass stuff. There hasn't been a phone in a while from them that I've liked, and a lot of their stuff has only been overseas in the United States for people who may be watching this internationally and don't know who I am. Hi, I'm Dave. Anyway, Sharp phones... Cool phones, um, but other than that, there's nothing special that sticks out about them like S-tier and A-tier would for me. Like, this thing has the back LEDs. Cool on its own, honestly. Honor phones. <sighs> I'm throwing one of those in the dumpster if I get one. Honestly, I'll throw it in the dumpster. Oppo. How do I rate Oppo? How do I rate Oppo? Wherever Oppo goes, OnePlus goes. What a lot of people don't know is Oppo owns OnePlus. A lot of the phones that OnePlus releases in the United States are just rebranded Oppos. I've had a couple OnePlus phones. I've had a lot of them. And I've only had, I think, one Oppo phone. Eh, they're, they're nothing to write home about anymore. When OnePlus started, if they would have kept their tactics of sales the way that they did when they first started, they were like the budget phone for with high-end hardware. If they kept that going, they would have been up here. They aren't that anymore. 
They aren't special anymore. They're just another phone that costs too much. So in reality, they go down here. They go at C tier. I'll sell them. I still have my OnePlus 7 Pro 5G. I made the mistake of getting a 5G. The OnePlus 7 Pro LTE is a fantastic phone. Do not get the 5G. It just sucks battery, and most carriers do not support the bands that 5G of the 5G model of the phone. Verizon will not activate the 5G. AT&T will not activate the 5G. Mint Mobile did activate the 5G, and T-Mobile will activate the 5G. But that's about it. Vivo! No. Sony! <laughs> that's as far as we're going with Vivo. <laughs> um, Sony phones. I own a couple of them. I like them. I wish they would have gone USB-C sooner, just like everybody else did, but they they kept on the micro-USB bandwagon, and I don't know why. I don't get it. I actually have uh, a Sony Xperia right in my hand right now. Really cool freaking phone. I really like it. I was going to daily drive this phone, but there's a really stupid security feature that these and Nokia's have. If there is a Google account logged in on the device, you cannot boot to Android recovery unless you can unlock the uh, lock screen and then do USB debugging and ADB reboot recovery. That is the only way to get to recovery on one of these phones. My Sony Xperia that I have in my hand came out of a Amazon return lot. The person did not remove their information from it before selling it, and because I can't connect it to Wi-Fi and I can't get it to Android recovery at all, I can't reset this phone. This person's data is stuck on here forever. I'm not comfortable selling a phone that has somebody's Google account on it when I can't get around the passcode screen. So Nokia's have that same security. So because of that, they only go B tier. Great phones when you can use them, especially the ones that you can custom ROM. I sold one a couple months ago that had IOD OS on it, which is another variation of a similar OS would be like E Foundation or LEOS. One of these days we'll do a comparison video of Android ROMs and I'll go and explain, you know, maybe we'll do a tier list of like my favorite ROMs. But anyway, let's keep going. Huawei. Eh. I'll sell them. I won't use one. They are good phones. They kind of push the envelope technology wise uh, overseas. We don't get much of them over here. I got a sneeze. Yeah, Huawei. Just, eh, I'll sell them if I get one. But the only way I'm getting one is if I get it dummy cheap. HTC. One of my favorite phone manufacturers ever. I know that, that could be argued. In all honesty, though, one of my favorites. Eh. Otherwise, yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, I still have... My original HTC One M6. I bought it off of Craigslist a years ago. Uh, I don't even remember how long ago at this point. Um, it's been a very long time, and the guy tried to screw me on it. I'll be completely honest. They tried to screw me on it. Uh, they factory reset it, and when I was... Going through setup, I didn't think to check it before giving them the money. Um, this is what started the whole I love FRP bypassing phase of my life. There was still a Google account attached to it, but I figured out a way to get around the Google account. And then um, I also started to realize that maybe this phone was stolen because the IMEI was blacklisted. So I couldn't use it either. But... That's also where my knowledge of rooting, bootloader unlocking, and modifying phones came into play. Figured out my own method of what's called S-Off for HTCs, older ones. I figured out my own method of rooting the device, and then I figured out how to change the IMEI. Uh, I know, frowned upon, and potentially illegal, but I changed it to another HTC that was never going to work other, ever again, and then I could use the phone. Hold on a second. Oh my god. I hate when I sneeze all the time. Oh yeah, another thing about OnePlus, by the way. My girlfriend 
loves OnePlus. She has a OnePlus 6T. She will not get rid of it. She will not switch away from it. Even though I literally have an identical OnePlus 6T, she won't switch to it. But I have a Galaxy S9 for her as well. International variant running Lineage OS with safety net and everything bypassed with root. Trying to talk her into that phone. Because I think it's better than the OnePlus 6T, but whatever. So, anyway, let's go into the big battle. These are the creator of Android, creator of iOS, iPad OS. Well, not creator of Android, but you know what I mean. Google phones. Mm. I'm going behind the Razer phone. And actually, the more I... Th well, no. Yeah. I'm going behind the Razer phone. So, like, if this is perfect, A plus 99 point... Or 80, uh, like... This is 99.9%. This is 100%. This is, like, 98%. I do love Google Pixels. I do not fault... The issues that I'm having with my Google Pixel 6a necessarily on Google or the ROM creators or anything like that. I've used CR Droid on my Pixel. I've used AICP. AICP is better, but the battery life sucks. It sucks down battery. And there's terrible RAM management on Google Pixel 6a's. I don't understand why. Um, I have a big issue, especially on CR Droid ROM. That thing had a nightmare of issues. You had the ROM running in the background, and then you opened up even like Google Chrome to just Google something real quick, and then went back to the previous app you were using. Any other phone, even my Essential phones or my Razer phones, or even actually uh, there's a couple phones I'll do like honorable mentions on. Um, that aren't on this list, like HP actually made the Palm Mini, there's the K-Touch brand, and Jelly Phones, and Jelly Phone is definitely B-tier, the HP Palm Mini is B-tier, the Google Pixels, they're A-tier, because if you want a phone you can trust to root and ROM, as long as you're not buying it from your carrier, you can do it. Samsung's, you can't do that. You can't just go buy a Samsung phone from Samsung and then bootload or unlock it and you're good to go. It should work that way. It should work the same way. Google Pixels, you can always unlock them if you buy it directly from the factory or once the device is paid off from the carrier, OEM unlocking will unlock itself except for Verizon variants. So, especially the fact that Graphene OS... Calyx is bad, stick with Graphene, or like eFoundation, or Lineage OS. There's so much support for Google Pixels. I just punched the microphone, I'm sorry. There's so much support for them. That's why I like them, and they are incredibly easy to repair ever since like the 4A. Very difficult to get the front screen off, so if you have to do something like a battery, don't bother. But screen repairs are simple, especially on the 6s and the 7s. It's just overall, they're great phones. Now, where do I put Apple? Where do I put Apple? It's going to go high B tier. It's going to be like a B plus. I don't like Apple as a company. With that, though, their hardware and operating system together are absolutely fantastic. I enjoy Apple iPhones. I really do. I enjoy using them. I enjoy tweaking them with jailbreak tweaks and stuff like that once I can unlock them and jailbreak them. But I will never give Apple any money. I will resell them all day, but the market's very flooded and it's very difficult to buy and sell Apple iPhones. 
iPhones, overall, great. iPads, fantastic. There's not an Android tablet out there that can touch an iPad. MacBooks, I know that's outside the scope of this because this is phones, but MacBooks are fantastic. My favorite laptop that I own is an A1465 from 2014. Show me a Windows computer from 2014 that's 125 bucks that can keep up with that MacBook. I'll wait. There isn't one. It's not possible. I have four MacBooks on the floor next to me. They all work. They're A1370s? One's a 1465, but it's like a 2011. Um, yeah, 1370. So these are like 2011s. They're not bad either. They still work phenomenally. Yes, they don't get app. They don't get updates anymore. Or, no, they don't get updates anymore. But overall, show me computers that are ten years old that are running Windows that run as well as a ten-year-old MacBook. Show me a five-year-old Android phone. Let's say iPhone eight. An iPhone eight is fantastic. Show me an Android phone that runs as well as an iPhone 8 in the same price bracket. There's not many Android phones that match that. And if they do, it's like a Samsung or like the Google Pixel. Other than that, there's not much that can match an Apple iPhone. And there's nothing that can match an iPad unless you're going Microsoft Surface. And at that point, you're buying a computer. You're not buying a tablet. I know they sell them as tablet only. But realistically, wise up. It's a, it's it's a computer. So anyway, that's my tier list. Take took me half an hour to get through that. Good lord, that's my tier list on phone manufacturers. If you guys want to see more tier list videos? I'm definitely gonna do more. So it doesn't really matter if you want to see them or not. I was looking at my analytics the other day. Holy crap! Only one point nine of percent of people that are subscribed. 1.9% of my views are subscribers. That's it. So there's another 98.6% of people watching my videos that don't subscribe to my channel. I'd like to push to 5,000 by the end of this year. If we can get it sooner than that, I'll push the goal further. But let's keep going. I'll talk to you guys later. And uh, yeah, peace out.